Today, I've arranged all of NBA history into teams based on each player's draft spot. You want a team with 90% of all Hall of Fame centers? How about the first overall squad? You want a team with a sneaky cool big three drafted at the end of the lottery? The 15th overall squad is the one for you. I've built 22 teams in total using different draft slots, eliminating the ones that uh, I didn't think would be competitive. And uh, brother, we got some good rosters here. Beginning with the category I'm calling obviously stacked and that would be led by the number one overall pick lebron kareem tim duncan hakeem do you see all these big men uh they've also got magic big o alan iverson <laughs> this video is definitely anybody but pick number one if anybody else wins a championship like that'll be a w I i'm rooting against them i really am one of the teams that will definitely challenge them or hopefully anyways push them pick number three michael jordan wilt chamberlain joel Embiid, luka Doncic. how did these dudes fall to number three that's kind of the theme of this team. Yeah, very loaded. Jumping ahead another two spots, we've got pick number five. I was kind of shocked at how awesome this team is. KG, D Wade, Scotty Pippen, Walt Frazier. A lot of balance, although not very many, uh, very many centers. KG is going to have to carry the load. And another team I'm sneaking in here as obviously loaded. Uh, emphasis on the sneaking in. Dirk Nowitzki, John Havlicek, Tracy McGrady, Amari Stoudemire, Sean Marion, all of them picked at number nine overall. It's not as good as those other teams, but come on, it's a fun Ross. Now there's a few teams that relatively speaking, they aren't as good as I thought they'd be. Pick number four, for example, um, I didn't mention them earlier because I mean, you know, like it doesn't blow me away to Kembe Mutombo, Dave DeBush here. I know they'll be competitive, but they probably won't win anything. Same goes for number seven. When I saw Steph Curry, Chris Mullen, Billy Cunningham, I got very excited, but it really falls off quickly. Not a lot of like iconic legends picked at this spot, unless you count Jamal Murray against the Lakers specifically. Now, obviously, as we get away from the top, top, and draft pick teams, it's going to start to thin out. That's the way the draft works. But we have three teams in a row that have like a sneaky top end. Beginning, of course, with pick number 13. How could anybody forget? Kobe Bryant fell all the way to Charlotte, who then traded him to the Lakers. Also, Carl Malone, Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell. This team, um, yeah, very fun. Similarly, pick number 14, led by Clyde Drexler, Mo Lucas, Tim Hardaway, Hal Greer. I mean, they got some Hall of Famers. You know, they're probably not deep enough to compete at a high, high level, but they could make some noise. And finally, pick number 15, I referenced them in the intro, Giannis, Kawhi, Steve Nash. That big three is like perfectly formulated. They, they've got a little bit of balance. They've got no bench, but will they need it? Now, I included every pick from one through 17, but then I started skipping around because there were some draft picks that it just would, it, the teams would win like zero games. So for example, I skipped ahead to pick number 24, Kyle Lowry, AK-47, Sam Cassell, Arvada Sabonis. They've at least got a strong seven or eight players. I like that. Pick number 29 doesn't look so bad with 94 overall Dennis Johnson, PJ Brown, Eddie Johnson, uh, Derek White, DeJounte Murray, a couple current day studs, Tony Kukoc. And of course, I had to go with pick number 30, the final of the first round. Jimmy Butler, Spencer Haywood, Desmond Bain. Do I think these last few teams will compete for a title? No, but at least they're fun. And the final category of teams I included, two teams, one for undrafted players, the second for second rounders. Now, both these teams will be competitive. For example, the undrafted drafted players team Moses Malone, George Mike, and Connie Hawkins. Well, they are very big man heavy. I'm just noticing that now they do have some nice overalls, but probably not balanced enough. Not a problem though. Balance for the second round draft picks led by three-time MVP Nikola Jokic, Marc Gasol, Gilbert Arenas, Jalen Brunson. He's a superstar right now. Manu, this team, I'm really excited for the second rounders. They could do some damage. Let me know down below which draft pick team other than the first overall pick you think might win this video. You can't say the first overall pick. It's too obvious, all right? And here we go. The number one overall draft picks probably had a great season as predicted as they've got the MVP. Oscar Robertson, that's kind of interesting. Billy Cunningham on pick number seven. Yeah, Steph's, uh, Steph Curry's team winning six man of the year. DPOY goes to Bill Russell on the second overall picks. I don't think I showed you their roster. Dr. J, Julius Irving on the 12th overall picks, I believe, winning clutch player of the year. Okay, good numbers. First team all NBA, we've got Big O, Dr. J, Spencer Haywood from pick number 30. Okay, Giannis and Carl Malone. Second team all NBA, uh, we got Nikola Jokic, Kevin Garnett, John Stockton, Larry Bird, and Bob Davies from the undrafted players. All right. Third team all NBA, yo, pick number 30 had two all NBAers, Jimmy and Haywood, Clyde Drexler, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, KD, and my boy, Steve 
Steve Nash. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I seeded the playoffs, the standings, one through 16, and the first overall picks end up as the two seed. All right, that's a bit of a surprise. I mean, they won 68 games just behind pick number three, who I pointed out in the intro, but I digress. Look at the undrafted players up there in the top five. Also, pick number nine finishing ahead of pick number five. That's a bit surprising. Okay. Missing the playoffs? Yeah, most of our later pick. No, pick number 30. I thought with Jimmy and Haywood, they would make it. Pick number eight and pick number 12 are our highest seeds to miss or our highest picks to miss the playoffs, I should say. Okay. I didn't show love to either of those teams in the intro, and now you see why. Pick number eight, Robert Parrish, Sam Jones, Jack Sigma. I knew this team wasn't very good, and they missed the playoffs. There you go. My guy won clutch player of the year, but Dr. J with Tyrese Halliburton couldn't push pick number 12 into uh, any type of success. Uh, you hate to see. The NBA writers obviously felt like they had to give Julius Irving some sort of credit. He won clutch player of the year despite missing the playoffs. Spencer Haywood and Jimmy Butler, just a dynamic duo, didn't lead pick number 30 to the playoffs, but put up huge numbers. Giannis, Desmond Bain. Whenever I make these kinds of videos, the stat leaders are all over the place because it's whoever has like the least amount of help on their team, which is kind of funny. I see Kawhi up there. Hold on. Yeah, pick number 15. They did slip into the playoffs. Giannis and Kawhi both over 20 points a game. Steve Nash made all NBA third, a solid double double average. Uh, yeah, this is kind of my team. All right, I'm calling it now. But let's dive into these playoff matchups because this is where the storylines really begin to unfold. Let's see it. Winnie, come here. Come to the door if you think people should use code JCAN at Underdog. Oh my goodness. She came because she really believes it. I mean, she just gets it. She just absolutely gets it. She's a very smart puppy. If you also want to be a smart puppy, then uh, go ahead, sign up for Underdog. There has never been a better time. The NBA playoffs, the NHL playoffs, the MLB sees so much more. It's all going on on Underdog. Use my link down below and code JCAN for a special pick in your lobby as well as a deposit match offer on your first deposit. Um, let's just ignore her. What is she? Um, she's trying to eat her tail. Yeah, she's... She's dumb, but... Or, you know, some, sometimes we don't get uh, like a, any chaos, any chaotic storyline. Sometimes things just play out. Like The left side of our playoff bracket, 4-1, uh, 4-1, four, one, four, one, four, nothing, 4 nothing. The 1, 4, 5, 8 seeds advance. So all the favorites, that's, that's kind of tough. Thankfully, we have drama in one series in the first round. The fifth overall picks against Nikola Jokic in the second rounders. The lone series to give us anything interesting. The only game seven. Let's see. Hopefully, it's a clutch finish. Well... You just, you just hate to see that. Ray Allen rubbing it in with a late bucket. Not a clutch finish. Not a close game. It was a blowout. Game seven. It just come on, man. The second rounders get eliminated. The fifth overall pick uh, earns the right to play the first overall picks in the next round. We've also got the fourth overall picks taking on the ninth overall picks. Again, all the favorites won. Oh, good for the fourth overall picks. I was kind of hating on them during the intro. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm not really sure why. Less sexy name out there, but a really good squad, obviously. Man, speaking of giving teams a run for their money, there is none of that going on on the left side of our bracket. A couple five-game series, the third and second overall picks will do bad. Pour one out for the undrafted players, man. They tried to make a run at it. Moses killing it in the playoffs. E George Mike and yeah, they just, they just, just not enough. But don't look now. We've got some potential drama on the right side of our bracket. The first overall picks are indeed having their money run. But also, the ninth overall picks looking to force this series to to a seventh game against the fourth overall picks. They're at home doing it. And indeed, we're going to have a game seven. Oh, it ended a six point as a six point game. Okay. Will we see the same fate for the fifth overall picks forcing a game seven against a heavyweight opponent? Oh my gosh, they might actually be doing it right now. It's a four point deficit for the fifth overall picks. But with their home fans behind them, can they pull this off LeBron with a post hook? Nah, that's a dumb shot, LeBron. What do the fifth overall picks have to offer? Walt Frazier, that's the... Uh, uh, I, I mean, sure. That was kind of an ugly shot, but it worked. The first overall picks have a few big men out there. Kareem, Tim Duncan with the floater. That's beautiful touch. I don't know about going to KG in the post. Oh, look at Chuck. Look at Chuck. What? Wow, that was a weird animation. Uh, okay. Are the fifth overall picks gonna foul now? There is a shot clock difference. Anthony Edwards, oh my gosh, turns the ball over. I can't believe that actually happened. Okay, huge jump ball. Ant versus D Wade. Prime D Wade loses the tip. Are you kidding me? It's okay though. The fifth overall picks don't have to foul. That might have been the most clutch play Anthony Edwards has made in his life. LeBron controlling out top, gonna run a pick and roll with Tim Duncan. They couldn't stop this last time, but they do this time. LeBron Brick. Come on, fifth overall. 
overall picks. Don't show me OT. Just just go for a three right here. Ray. Oh, wait. Yeah, I think Ray Allen is on this team. I think he's not on the floor, though, so it doesn't matter. They're going to go for two. Walt Frazier stepping back. Don't go out of bounds. Walt Frazier doing way too much dribbling. Charles Barkley for three for the nope. win. That was actually a pretty good look, but he smoked it. Yeah, I knew it. Ray Allen was on this fifth overall draft picks team. You don't have him out there in that situation. Coaching malpractice. It is what it is. At least we have one game seven. The fourth overall draft picks, aka the Pelicans against the Mavs. The ninth overall draft picks. Uh-oh, and this one also going right down to the wire. The fourth overall picks are down four late. Okay, T-Mac, yo, he loves to... If T-Mac gets the ball back, he's shooting it. But no, they're going into dirt. From the elbow this time, he's getting doubled. Okay, good defense, I guess. Wait, Kemba Walker wide open? No, it was not good defense. If you leave Kemba Walker wide open, down seven now, running out of timeouts. Okay, Russell Westbrook, that would... Yeah. Okay, that was not great execution by uh, pick number four. They're done. And we officially have our first upset as into the conference finals. We've got the third overall picks versus the second. That that makes sense. That's normal. The first overall picks, yes, but the ninth overall picks, a little, a little magic there. I mean, again, their roster is great. There's a reason I pointed them out in the intro, but uh, as the sixth seed in the playoffs, I mean, advancing to the final four, that is pretty good. Okay, they're, they're, they're competing out there. That's all I'm saying. Cool story, bro, but... Um... Oh, Okay, now here we are, you know, getting to it down the wire in the playoffs. Usually at this time, I try and create some drama in the video. I, I give some B-roll, some epic voiceover because, you, know, you know, it's worth it. It's deserved. Unfortunately, in this video, the chaos has been at a minimum and that just continued. So screw the B-roll and epic voiceover. Into the NBA Finals, we've got the first overall draft picks and the second overall draft picks. The most predictable outcome possible for this video. Honestly, you all hate to see it. I know I do. I spent an insane amount of time building this roster just to have it come down to a uh, yeah, all these 99s picked first overall. I mean, it really makes sense. Shout out to 2K Simulation for making sense. And of course, the second overall picks who are probably the second best roster. So there you go. I, I could have just made these two teams and done a best of seven series. I could have made this YouTube video into a shorts. Uh, a short. A shorts? Y you know what I mean. I am. I'm a f but since it's been anticlimactic, I'm going to go game by game through the NBA Finals and see if we can't get an upset from the second overall picks. Because in my humble opinion, it would be an upset. The first overall picks, man, they are so good. They have like 599 overall. So even though the second overall picks were drafted just behind them, I would consider this to be a massive upset. Let's see it. Oh, word? A word? Game one is kind of a blowout? The second overall picks make a statement right out the gates. Bill Russell leading all scores with 29 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists. Let's roll right into game two. Can the second overall picks steal both games on the road? This would be mad. They've already stolen home court advantage. And they're not going to get them both. That's okay, though. They did their job. They split on the road in the NBA Finals. That's all any team is looking for. Oscar Robertson, the MVP, 24.7 assists, led the way. This is kind of fun. I hope we don't get another blowout. Can I get a clutch finish? Like, at least one or two games here, team? Ah, LeBron and the first overall picks. Big O and the first overall picks steal back home court advantage in game three. It was pretty close. Not an epic finish, unfortunately. And actually, it was Shaquille O'Neal this time, leading them in scoring 25 points in 23 minutes. Uh-oh, did they unlock something? Shaq is unstoppable. I mean, you do have Bill Russell on the other side, but Bill is battling with Shaq, Kareem, Tim Duncan, all them superstars. I don't know. Oh, baby, here we go. Here we go. We go two point game, game four. The second overall picks are down two, and this is kind of a must win. I mean, not literally, uh, but if they drop two games in a row, go down three one, it's amazing. It's basically over. Wow, the first overall picks have four centers out here right now. Oh, including Shaq, who's got two. KD on LeBron, mid post, bringing a little help is Wes Unseld. Oh, LeBron, a beautiful step back from the post. Yeah, this game's over, right? Wes Unseld, decent look from three. No, it's a three one series. Please, second overall picks, I'm begging you, do something something to inject this video with some unpredictability. Whatever happened to predictability? The paper boy, the something something. What, what? All right, the second overall picks on the road. Not going down without a fight. We love to see Look it. Look at KD feasting Jerry West, Bob Pettit, all with over 20 points. I think it was the Full House theme song. I think that's what did it for us. But I can't be biased, so I won't sing it again. It's obviously a good luck charm for the second overall picks who are back at home, by the way, trying to force a game seven. Oh my gosh, and they're actually going to do it. I Yo.
I did. I've kind of. Been, yeah, I've just been joking around. I did not think that would happen. Are you serious? Bill Russell again leading the way. Gary Payton. Oh my word. Thank you. Okay, this video, the first and second overall picks, obviously we could have predicted would make the finals. At least they're going right down to the wire. A game seven. One more look at the starting lineups before game seven. I mean, it looks way better for the first overall picks. They've also got 99 Shaq off the bench, but number two, man, the second overall picks. They are fighting. They want to be first. And in game seven, well, there was zero defense played in the first quarter with the first overall picks out to a narrow lead. But led by 16 first half points from Jerry West, the second overalls came back to take the lead into half. Bob Pettit would help them win another quarter. The third, a six point lead for the second overall picks heading into the final frame. A lead that they have maintained all the way down to 90 seconds remaining. Now it's only a four point lead. Anything can happen, but OKD okay, pulling up, missing, but Bill Russell on the glass, dude. Uh, Oscar inside to Cream. Yeah, wait a minute. Bill Russell's there. Greatest defender of all time? Nope. Maybe he claps Cream. Oh, Cream got the board. Oh, they were this close. All the second overall picks got to do. If KD keeps cooking LeBron, oh my, Bill Russell inside. Wow, they just gave him that whistle. And Bill made both free throws count. What a legend. All right, out of the timeouts, what are the timeout? What do the first overall picks have? I'll tell you what they don't have. Very much perimeter shooting, and they could really use a three here. But do they go to Ant Edwards or LeBron? Or are they just going to go for twos? Big O. Inside to Kareem. Dude, I don't like this matchup. Kareem on the step back, Bill Russell, and nah, that's never going in. Are you serious? I mean, I suppose if they hit another free throw, another three here, but they're out of timeout. So yeah, LeBron, you can't miss this, LeBron. You cannot miss. He missed it. All right, well, that's game over. I built 22 teams of players drafted with the same pick and put them all into one league. And in an epic 3-1 series comeback in the NBA Finals, it is the second overall picks who come out as champions, upsetting the first overall picks, which is honestly quite a shock, I can't lie. Jerry West coming up clutch, winning finals MVP. It could have been him, could have been KD, could have been Bill Russell, lots of options. But it is not a member of the first overall picks winning finals MVP because they indeed came up short. I am shocked. Let let me know what you thought of the video and the outcome and be sure to check out another one from my channel.